Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm riding this. This is the Royal Enfield Shotgun 650 which is technically based on the Super Meteor 650 because it seems like a custom motorcycle but it is a bobber style motorcycle. Everything is round here. Round headlight, round indicators, round instrument cluster, round tripper navigation, round mirrors. In fact, even the fuel cap is round and so are the tires and discs. Just kidding, everything is round because it's a retro shape but tires cannot be rectangle, the bike won't move. So these seem to be halogen. This is LED of course, but why can I see the inside here? That's kind of weird. Let me actually show you the high beam. Can you see that? Yep. And this motorcycle's paint finish actually looks quite good. I really like it. You get upside down forks here, 320 mm front disc. The tire size at the front, 19018. In the Super Meteor, the front tire is actually a 19 incher. Meanwhile, the rear tire is a 16 incher. Here it is a 17 incher, 150, 70, 17. This bike is low and it is long, just like the Super Meteor in terms of the engine, because this is a 650cc parallel twin engine, which has this black finishing now, which is sort of piano black. I'm not going to touch it to see if it's a fingerprint magnet because I'm going to burn my hands, obviously. The exhaust design is not nice because it's not as good as the way it has been done on the Super Meteor, sort of like the Interceptor and the Continental GT650. The tank looks very sleek, but this bike is all about form over function because the fuel tank capacity is decreased by 2 litres. This is a 13.8 litre tank. Now this could be conceived better for sure. Meanwhile, ground clearance has actually been reduced. Around 140 mm is the ground clearance. The seat height has increased from 740 mm on the Super Meteor 650 to 795 mm, which is good news for someone as tall as me. And the rear disc is also quite big. 300 mm rear disc. Twin shocks, of course. This is a floating seat and Yamaha has inspired Royal Enfield because you arrive alone here. No, you can actually get a pillion seat as an option or a mount for your luggage, of course. Meanwhile, at the rear, doesn't seem LED to me. Typical Royal Enfield design, nothing new, nothing different here because they keep doing similar design languages. So it's unmistakably a Royal Enfield motorcycle, but sort of a custom looking one, which is good. It even says Royal Enfield on the pegs. Meanwhile, the Sari guard has been very nicely done. I just wish the exhaust were better done, of course. And here it says Royal Enfield on the handlebar. Royal Enfield is written almost everywhere. That's kind of crazy branding. And the mirrors, well, I'll tell you if they give you a good view of what's around when we ride it. Levers are adjustable. Yeah, both the levers are adjustable here. This is made of metal. Like almost everything on this motorcycle is made of metal, including panels here. Yeah, that's the reason this motorcycle weighs a lot. The weight of this motorcycle is 240 kgs, which is usually the weight of really heavy motorcycles. So this is a heavy motorcycle. Let's turn off the hazards. This is the engine kill switch, engine start. That's about it on this particular side. On the other side, well, this is for the headlight. It says I here. Yeah, there it is. To browse through a lot of things on the cluster. And this is the horn, which will not work because I turned off the motorcycle. So it does this full swipe up thing. It gets a tripper navigation which is basically going to be a clock unless and until you connect it via Bluetooth. So it gives you plenty of information here, like what is the eco gear, time, odometer. I can use this eye button to browse through twin trip meters, telltale lights placed everywhere, but this is a bit too busy. Let's actually turn on the motorcycle. And yeah, it is actually a very smooth motorcycle at idle. Let's drive it. All right, let's see how is it to ride by riding of course all right let's turn on the motorcycle full swipe up says tripper and there you know something has turned on you know what is the big deal about this motorcycle at, a, at one time actually royal enfield was known as a vibrating machine and i also made a lot of fun of royal enfield but today royal enfield is smooth and this is the vibrating and buzzy machine which is co-engineered with bmw so times definitely change and straight away i can tell you the motor is very refined and the riding position seems better than the super meteor because uh, i kind of feel better and more comfortable lower down because of the increase in seat height so yeah this feels better for sure however the handlebar is a bit too forward it should have been a little taller it should have been a bit wider as well so my arms are a bit stretched so leaned in position not really appreciated on a motorcycle of this kind and then handlebar seems quite heavy as well so this is a 648 cc parallel twin engine which is obviously fantastic yeah let me get onto the throttle oh my goodness what a nice mid-range there's no tachometer so really i can't judge much but what i can tell you that the engine is really nice and smooth and vibrations are well contained it has a character to it okay i can feel a little bit of buzzing on my
seats on the seat uh, not so much on the pegs and the handlebar on on the tank either so yes it's a smooth motorcycle and quickly i'll tell you what is the fuel efficiency of this motorcycle somewhere between 20 to 28 kilometers per liter depending on your riding style and it's actually a fun and easy motorcycle to ride which handles quite nicely as well yeah handling is good this good amount of grip considering the performance is not going to like throw you back into the rear seat because there's none <laughs> not the performance but the seat yes it's a easy bike to ride only thing is it feels cumbersome to ride it in the city firstly the pegs are on the wider side and then the exhaust is sticking out wider and then obviously the handlebar is heavy like i told you so maneuverability is not the best and then there's a lot of weight as well this motorcycle weighs 240 kgs which is equivalent to some really powerful motorcycle so i can say even the ducati street fighter does not weigh that much honestly and uh, maybe i think a few really heavy motorcycles i'm not able to recollect names of some bikes like maybe the rocket 3 it weighs a lot more obviously but yeah it kind of gives you the rocket 3 weight vibe here anyways there's no riding mode there's none of that it's very simple plain classic motorcycle which is meant to just attract a lot of attention but it has the performance it doesn't feel lackluster in terms of the grunt because the engine is powerful enough in fact we are going to come to a stop right here and i'm in first gear already so here we go launch oh first gear 60 oh my god it's 65 kilometers per hour second gear almost 100 kilometers per hour in second that is tall gearing and i'm doing clutch yes shifts obviously third gear it does 120 kilometers per hour now i change the clutchless shift part it does not do clutchless shifts there and then it will do a top speed of around 150 kilometers per hour but there's way too much wind blast a crazy amount of wind blast on this motorcycle so yeah you can feel the wind a lot of wind and the only problem is that uh, this motorcycle is not meant for high speed riding so it does move around quite a bit high speed stability is not the best grip levels are fine not that you want to push it hard so this one makes 47 horsepower the very same power and torque output as the other royal enfield 650 cc motorcycles torque output 52.3 newton meters 47 horsepower comes in at 7250 rpm mid range is really nice low end is a little lackluster top end who cares because it's a mid what am i saying mid range wave is what you're going to be riding feels a bit bouncy so yeah suspension is on the stiffer side i don't know why it's bouncing if it's on the stiffer side so it's not very firm it is stiff but not very firm so it's not harsh in that regard it's comfortable enough i would say and then I, I don't know why i'm in the 18th lane of the road uh, trying to get in from this side but that's a biker mentality you sit on a motorcycle and you start doing these stupid things all right let's get in let's honk because we can the horn isn't that great the horn could be better oh my god the creta guy honked dude what's up <laughs> creta guys and horn a love story untold anyways pretty much told actually and shifts are smooth but the clutch is slightly on the heavier side the creta guy is in a super duper hurry today so he's going to make way for us that's a good thing sorry creta but nothing beats a motorcycle when it comes to acceleration okay that is a top gear no it's a six speed gearbox easily it cruises at higher speeds brakes are a bit uh, too initial bite seems a bit aggressive actually it's not about the initial bite because i'm not applying the front brake i was applying the rear brake the rear brake is just too big for this kind of a motorcycle firstly 300 mm it's just too big it's too alert every time you step on the rear brake it immediately like obviously decelerates and then the abs obviously kicks in as well very abruptly so if you use both the brakes it's fine but if you use just the rear well not the best thing to do because it just feels a bit too sharp at the rear meanwhile there are three variants on offer there is a custom shed there's a custom pro and there's a custom special price range starts at 4.26 lakhs on road mumbai going all the way till 4.41 lakhs on road mumbai this is actually cheaper than the meteor 650 sorry the super meteor 650 cheaper by 5000 on the lower end and cheaper by rupees 25000 on the higher end obviously the super meteor 650 comes with a lot more features this one not so much because this is all about customization and i feel you're better off getting super meteor actually 650 because i think that bike just feels overall better to ride in a lot of ways it just definitely feels better to ride to me more comfortable as well because they have actually reduced the rear suspension travel by 11 mm here ride is not bad i just feel a little bit too much on my back right now i feel this motorcycle is not really apt for riding long super meteor is a better option in that regard because the others are also not that comfortable to ride in the longer run and here we go It 
doesn't do clutch the shop shifts from second gear onwards does it in first first to second it does it for sure after that i think it goes for a nap and says i am no longer needed i cannot work there so yes show a upside down folks at the front they have given it good hardware yeah royal enfield is making some really good motorcycles but among the four 650 cc motorcycles i think i like the continental gt 650 the most because i think that has the best handling of all of them because of the clip on bars and the position of the way the bars have been done the handlebars have been done and all that i definitely like that one better because it offers the most aggressive riding and handling handling is good here only thing is cornering clearance is not that great and the ground clearance is also poor which means you are going to end up scraping the underbelly many times especially on a really bad pathetic speed breakers and there are plenty of them on our road so you have to be a bit careful in that regard it sounds really nice at idle with the thump so yes royal enfield is doing a fantastic job what did i just eat what but forget that let's go first to second clutch less now no it no longer works so yeah, royal enfield is doing a fantastic job by giving us motorcycles with very options and various body styles as well and the thing i like the most is that they have given us twin cylinder motorcycles at an attractive price what is bajaj tvs and the other people doing i don't even understand but i'm happy that this is a twin cylinder which means that it is smooth refined and not as expensive as some of the motorcycles in the segment are becoming right now the impatient thar guy who is standing on the zebra crossing signal is red his car is red and he is gone and mr active is also following his footsteps so then the jazz decides let's also stand on the zebra crossing they seem to have done heat management quite well because i'm not feeling much of the heat even though i was idling on the signal for almost a lot of time around 60 80 seconds probably even more the next thing is that i was telling you how motorcycles are getting expensive a lot of the motorcycles around this price point are single cylinder motorcycles which only offer a single cylinder obviously but they also have a ton of features and most of them are useless like i was riding the tvs apache rr310 today it has everything but the kitchen sink and it doesn't feel that great to ride a motorcycle is the thing we want to ride not go around playing with stupid features like a screen and bluetooth and music and gopro compatibility and all that nonsense in that sense i think royal enfield has got its spot on the true essence of motorcycling which is all about definitely the riding experience it's plain simple basic i don't want faltu ki screen just give me a tachometer instead of this triple navigation i am more than happy and i'm happy to say that the shotgun is an exciting direction which royal enfield is taking right now i only wish that you know uh, they could have given us slightly more stuff like a tachometer of course and these mirrors are very much useless i think i've been looking at my arm only to realize that i have not been to the gym since years now so that's something uh, that needs to be better unnecessary big rear disc not needed too sensitive too powerful rear brakes not really needed instead they could have worked on other aspects but yeah this is how it is and i think uh, i was going to do some cornering around here but we have hit a ton of traffic with people riding super bikes one liter super bikes and that mercedes is camera is open right now there it shuts please move aside royal enfield coming your way every bump now somehow i can feel it it feels very predictable and nice to ride beautiful motorcycle not my kind i will get the continental gt650 but now you have so many options if you are looking to buy a 650 cc motorcycle from royal enfield and actually these four motorcycles from royal enfield are the most affordable rather the cheapest twin cylinder motorcycles in india everyone what the f give us twin cylinder engine motorcycles right now